we're asked to determine any points of inflection and then determine the intervals for which the function is concave up or concave down. Remember, the sign of the second derivative indicates the concavity of a function. So if f is a differentiable function over an interval, if the second derivative is greater than zero or positive for all x in the interval, then f of x is concave up. And if the second derivative is less than zero or negative for all x in an interval, then f of x is concave down. And where a function changes concavity, we have a point of inflection. The first step here is to determine where the second derivative is equal to zero. Before we do this though, we need to find the first derivative. Notice to find the first derivative, we need to apply the product rule as well as the chain rule. So f prime of x is equal to the first function of x times your derivative of the second function, which is the derivative of e to the three x. Then we have plus the second function of e to the three x times your derivative of the first function, which is the derivative of x. Which gives us f prime of x equals x times the derivative of e to the three x is equal to e to the three x times your derivative of three x, which is three. e to the three x times three is equal to three e to the three x, and then we have plus e to the three x times the derivative of x, which is just one. Simplifying, we have f prime of x equals three x e to the three x plus e to the three x. And now we need to find the derivative of the first derivative to determine the second derivative. To find the derivative of three x e to the three x, we need to apply the product rule as well as the chain rule where we have the first function of three x times the derivative of the second function, which is the derivative of e to the three x, which is e to the three x times three, or three e to the three x, plus the second function of e to the three x, times the derivative of the first function, which is the derivative of three x, which is three. And then we have plus the derivative of e to the three x, which is e to the three x times three, or three e to the three x. This gives us the second derivative is equal to, we have nine x e to the three x plus three e to the three x plus three e to the three x, which gives us f double prime of x equals nine x e to the three x plus six e to the three x. Let's go ahead and rewrite this above. And how to find the possible locations of any points of inflection, we need to set the second derivative equal to zero and solve. So if we set this equal to zero, let's see if we can solve by factoring. Let's factor out the greatest common factor of three e to the three x. Which gives us three e to the three x times the quantity three x plus two. Notice we distribute, we still have nine x e to the three x plus six e to the three x. Well, three e to the three x is never going to equal zero, which means the only way the equation will equal zero is if three x plus two equals zero. Solving for x, we subtract two on both sides and then divide both sides by three. We have x equals negative two thirds. This is the only location where we might have a point of inflection. And since the domain of the original function is all real numbers, if we go over to the number line here in the upper right-hand corner, we would have negative infinity on the left, positive infinity on the right, and we'll make an open point on the number line at x equals negative two-thirds, which we'll call here. And notice how this breaks the domain of the given function into two subintervals where the subinterval on the left is the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds. And the right, we have the open interval from negative two thirds to infinity. And now we are going to pick a test value in each subinterval to determine the sign of the second derivative in each of these subintervals. Remember, the sign of the second derivative will indicate whether the function f of x is concave up or concave down over these intervals. For a test value, 
in the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds. Let's use negative one. And for the open interval from negative two thirds to infinity, let's use x equals zero. And now we are going to sub these values into the second derivative to determine the sine of the second derivative. So let's first determine the sine of f double prime of negative one. Let's go ahead and use the second derivative in the original form of nine x e to the three x plus six e to the three x, which gives us nine times negative one times e raised to the power of three times negative one plus six times e to the power of three times negative one. Simplifying, we have negative nine e to the power of negative three plus six times e to the power of negative three, which is equal to negative nine divided by e cubed plus six divided by e cubed, which is equal to negative three divided by e cubed, which is negative or less than zero, indicating the function is concave down over the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds. So we'll say the sine of the second derivative is negative, which indicates the function is concave down over this interval. And now we'll determine the sine of the second derivative at x equals zero. So f double prime of zero is equal to nine times zero times e to the power of three times zero plus six times e to the power of three times zero. The first product is zero, and then e to the zero is one, f double prime of zero is equal to six, which is greater than zero or positive. And because the second derivative is positive over the subinterval, the conclusion is the function is concave up over this interval. So now we know the function is concave up over the open interval from negative two thirds to infinity. We know the function is concave down over the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds. And because the function does change concavity at x equals negative two thirds, we know the x coordinate of the point of inflection is negative two thirds. To determine the y coordinate, we need to evaluate the original function at x equals negative two thirds. Remember the point of inflection is a point on the graph of the function, and therefore to find the y coordinate, we need to determine f of negative two thirds. f of negative two thirds is equal to negative two thirds times e raised to the power of three times negative two thirds, which is equal to negative two thirds times e raised to the power of negative two, which we can also write as negative two divided by the product of three and e squared. So this would be the exact value of the y coordinate of the point of inflection. Before we look at the graph to verify our work, negative two divided by three e squared to four decimal places is approximately negative 0 0.0902. The function is concave down over the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds, this interval here. The function is concave up over the open interval from negative two thirds to infinity, which is this interval here. And the function changes concavity at this red point here, which is the point negative two thirds comma negative two divided by three e squared. This is the point of inflection. So the graph does verify our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.